idea of or the previous presentations um, are not are really new to me. Um, I was introduced to user experience and information architecture just last year at the UX Summit. So I hope um, ito yung, the, yung topic ko, um, you can relate to it because it's not really visual, it's more of a textual because I will be dealing with um, government domains. Not really government websites, but how you will expect me to discuss government websites, but no, it's just government domains. So, uh, information architecture, I found this on the Information Architecture Institute. I was trying to relate our job to IA. Uh, it defines IA as a practice of deciding how to arrange the parts of something to be understandable. Um, I, chose, um, I chose government domains because when you visit a website, it's the first part that you interact with on the browser. Diba? You type in. You type in the domain that you want. Uh, the type in the domain of the website you want to visit. And uh, majority of, or the first thing when you visit a government website is type in a domain. But the problem is, uh, but the problem is, you don't know where to specifically get government information. For example, um, you want to you want to apply for a new passport. Where do you go? You go to the TFA because it's a well-known government website. Uh, for example, you want to go. Uh, you want to avail of a uh, what's a more a lesser known uh, service than government. Cedula. You want to get a cedula. Where do you go? Ah, di ba? Iba iba yung sinasabi nyo. Pero dahil online tayo, you Google it. Di ba? You Google it. How do you get a cedula? Di ba? So, yun yung problem. Kasi hindi yung, yung government, um, yung entity yung government online, well, sa Philippines, hindi siya well known to give information that you want. And that is our problem. Tapos yun yung try, pinatry namin to solve in our project. So going back to domain names, um, I'm relating that uh, this main problem to domain names. Balik na slides. <laughs> so this is the data of the domain names. Um, um, our institute actually um, controls the GovNet PH registry. So I have access to the domain names, uh, the GovNet PH domain names. And this is um, last, um, Ange mentioned in 2011 data. That data came from me because I audited the GovNet PH domains. <laughs> the GovNet PH domains, uh, is the, the registry is just a text file. Um, some, sino dito ang aware sa DNS architecture? Or is it yung... Okay. Ah, yes. You're familiar with Bind? Yes. Di ba text file lang siya? Text file lang siya. Hindi ka tulad nung um, uh, Power DNS, for example, it's database. Na ba't kung nakikita mo in tabular format yung, yung domains. So Bind is just a text file. So this government page registry contains um, 27,000 lines of text. And then, you have, I had to sort out yung which of these are yung active, inactive, which of these are yung still in use, and which of these are direct gov page domains or not. By direct gov page, I mean yung top level domains. For example, um, dfa.gov.ph, that's a top level domain. Um, and for example, uh, usa.dfa.gov.ph, USA that's, that's a second level domain. So, tapos pag nagpo-progress pa, go to second, you go to third, fourth level to me. So, in, this is the recent, this is the recent data. Uh, so, there's 2,424 <laughs> of the page top level domains. 1158 of them are active. 1266 are inactive, but they are still part of the registry. 57 are executive offices. By executive offices, we mean the departments or those that are reporting directly to the president. 188 are attached agencies. So attached agencies are um, 
sort of related agencies and these executive offices. 39 are government co owned and controlled corporations. So, medyo nakikita niya structure ng gobyerno dito, di ba? Nagsa na 24 regional offices. Kasi, um, each executive office or each attached agency may have a regional office. And then, 21 are the legislative offices, being the judiciary, or Congress, uh, House of Representatives, for example. 896 are local government units. And 669 top-level domains are special sites or project sites or special request lang na domains that we have some of them vanity um, lang, for example. Okay, ganun talaga. Yung parang, i-request kasi ni, ni, ni director dito, he wants this domain. Okay, ano tayo magagawa? Kasi, hindi <laughs> <laughs> kasi, syempre, the boss will tell you, uh, sabihin na, create this domain for this. So that's the uh, TNS landscape of the government. So can you imagine sorting through 2,324 websites just getting the information you want? So we go to the specific domain problems. There's too many inactive domains. 1266 out of the 24, 24, 24 are inactive, meaning you can view them, they're not um, there's no way you can see the content of those domains. There's too many PLDs, top-level domains, that are not supposed to be top-level domains. So those are, those are, this ones. Because supposedly the top-level domains are just this ones, the 57 executive offices, because there's a hierarchy. You the office of the president. So executive lang to, I'm not touching on the legislative and the judiciary. So executive, the departments, there's attached agencies, there's regional offices, the ILG has a separate, there's, that's the local government. So that's the structure of the government. So supposedly, tapos sila lang yung nasa taas. And the purpose of some domain names is not discernible at first. For example, can you tell me what this stands for? About water. Yes, it's about water. Uh, but, uh, yes, it's correct. It's about water. Um, but, um, which particular agency? Yes. I have, uh, I have inmates pala here. I bet, pati kayo hindi alam. It's a, it's a water district under the local water utilities administration from, of, uh, the, re, uh, municipality, I think, of Pato Pagantuanes. <laughs>
So, ito yung nakamot namin na structure dapat ng government domains. So, sa top level domain should be departments, independent agencies. Independent agencies kasi they answer directly to the president. Uh, autonomous law enforcement, for example, MMDA. It's also a uh, an independent agency, but it's also a uh, an autonomous agency. GOCCs. Then cross-agency collaborations. These are, these are the big projects. For example, our project is a nationwide project. So that's a cross-agency collaboration, meaning, um, well, in a nationwide, but it's also a uh, partnership from with of TOST and other department agencies. And nationwide government applications, uh, more on, or examples on that later. And then provinces, for example, Laguna that go up in PH, and then highly urbanized cities. So with these two major um, may sway lang kasi yung, yung syempre yung mayors and governors. They want their website to be well known. Second level directory, subsidiaries of this, attached agencies of this, cities of the provinces and municipalities of the provinces. The third level directory are regional offices. So that's the structure we are aiming for the DNS landscape. So, uh, basing on this, ito yung comparison, ito yung, yung current, tapos ito yung, yung proposed. Um, for example, doh.gov.ph will become health.gov.ph. Why? I mentioned earlier, there has to be, I'm sorry, <laughs> there has to be focus on the service offered. What is the service offered of DOH? It's health. So, it's um, our Actually, hindi lang ito yung current trends sa Philippines. More and more um, governments abroad are, are using this strategy. For example, you go to USA, there's health.gov. You go to UK, there's health.gov.uk. So more and more governments are focusing on services rather than the name of the department. And then, for example, mgb.dnr.gov.ph. We all know DNR is Environment and National Resources, but you don't know MGB. MGB is Mines and Geosciences Bureau. So that would be Environment slash Mines Geosciences Bureau. Region1.mgb.dnr.gov.ph would be slash Region1. Sanrafael.gov.ph. There's lots of San Rafael municipalities or cities in the Philippines. But you don't know which <coughs> province that is. So that would be albaydad.gov.ph, San Rafael. If there is a San Rafael in San Rafael, Pampanga, for example, so that would be Pampanga.gov.ph slash San Rafael. Then Bay will be Laguna.gov.ph slash Bay. Or Bay. <laughs> and then this one will be Cotabato.gov.ph slash Water District. And then this is a nationwide project. The Public Wi-Fi, ICTO, is an, an attached agency of DOSD. But you don't know what, uh, what ICTO is. It's Information and Communications Technology Office. But this is a nationwide uh, project, so that would be the public wifi .ph. And then another nationwide service also is dhang.com.ph. It's a mailing service of the government. Subdomains, major familiar na mga sa structure, no? Subdomains, domains, second level subdomains. But this one is a slash. Diba from, for example, uh, ito. DEMGP is a subdomain of DNR. DNR is subdomain of gov.ph. Pero dito na wala yung subdomain. Why? Kasi para ma, yung ma, Ma-relate mo yung Mines and Geosciences Bureau under the environment um, website. Kasi ngayon, there's lots and lots of website. So, with this, eventually, yung goal is to um, this for this website to be attached to this website. Kasi with this structure, the website is separate. Okay pa? 
So DNR has a separate website, MGB has a separate website. With this, there's just one website for the environment department. Uh, we also have Thank you. 